Congrats, this is like too good. Thank you. Congrats, congrats. This is congrats. like real handmade. This is like the best. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing great. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in Vyatsor, Armenia. This is one of the most popular areas for wine in the country. And today we're gonna to be doing a mix. We're gonna be seeing some historical sites and trying some wine and food. We're starting off right here at this monastery. What is this? This is Noravank Monastery, 13th, 14th centuries. Okay, and then after this, where are we going? We're going to a cave. You know about the cave. I know about the cave. <laughs> it's a 6,100 year old uh, winery inside the cave. It's the yeah. oldest winery in the world. And it's not the only treasure we're going to find in there. Okay, there's other things. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, we're gonna go to a winery. Well, it's like a showroom. We're gonna have some food. We're gonna try some of their delicious wines. I'm very, very excited. Are you guys ready? Let's go. This monastery is a jewel of Vyazo region. It, it was one of the most you know, dominating centers of prayer, learning and politics in 13th and 14th centuries. Awesome. So it's very similar to Tatev in that sense, but Tatev was a different region. Datev was different region. Datev uh, was in Sunik region. Datev was a big university, but it was also dominating mm -hmm. in Sunik region. But here we also have a learning center, which is dominating in Vazo region. And uh, by the way, the, uh, in 14th century, when uh, Turks in attacked Datev, the bishopic seat, they moved from Datev to Noravank. Oh wow. So it means they, they had like the same status. We have uh, the ruins of academy, we have ruins of 9th century church, because uh, the, uh, pr the background uh, of the monastery is very old, and we have here the ruins of 9th century church. We have a beautiful Khachkars, cross stones around the monastery and very interesting gravestones. I'm going wow. to show you. And so here we have the first Khachkar, right? Do you see the sign of the sun? Mm -hmm. It's a sign of eternity. It's another uh, version of swastika. Wow. We have in Armenia, you remember I told you they mm -hmm. are dating back to 5th millennium before Christ. We find them on our petroglyphs and all Armenian alphabet lies on this uh, swastika. In between these two churches, there's a small little cemetery. There's like 15 different gravestones. And you're saying this was really important. And why is that? These uh, gravestones is called metal. A gravestone because uh, the sleeping lion uh, is carved on the top and it means uh, that the person who is in there fought and died in a battle. Once you pass the cemetery, you make it here to the second church. At the entryway, we have like six more gravestones, really, really beautiful, really big. And then on top, they also have a lot of carvings. And this is like one of the only places I've ever seen the face of God actually carved out. It means God gave us life with the sacrifice of Adam and then he gave us everlasting life with sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. All right, so let's enter the church. Be very careful. I do not suggest walking on the tombs, on the gravestones, because if you do that, you're slowly like deteriorating it. And we don't want that to happen. Obviously, they, what they should do is they should put glass over all of them. But if you put glass, then it won't look as good, right? It won't look as authentic. Incredible. Can you notice that we don't have the four columns in the middle? This is really different. Mm -hmm. Like all the roof like lies on the uh, on the walls and they are the ones, they are the base for the roof. We don't have four columns like we saw in the other uh, monasteries. Mm -hmm. And anyway, it, this uh, hall was really stable even without having that four columns. And when there was an earthquake, everything was damaged, but this roof was stable thanks to calculations to a very famous architect, Momik, we had that time. Basically what you see here is a lot of inscriptions. So you have inscriptions and hachkas, and also crosses everywhere. Tons of crosses carved into the walls. Be careful here with the tombs. Wow, look at this, look at all these carvings. It's really incredible. I've never been to churches anywhere, Spain, Italy, anywhere, where they carve into the rock. Information. Yeah, they, they never did that, like over there. So that's only like Armenia. It's like a, a distinct thing here in Armenia. You find the ruins of academy. They used to create manuscripts in here. Wow. They, 
used to study different sciences, they used to do politics in here. So this was also like administrative center of this area. And what's this, like a well? This was a storage. A storage, yeah. wow. Next up we have the bigger church, right? And this one, as you can see, this you can actually go... This is not a unique one, by the way. I mean, in Armenia, you don't meet very often two-floory church, churches. This is one of the first two-floory churches we find in Armenia. Wow. So you can actually go up there if you want to. I'm going to go up the stairs. Wow, that's, that's intense. The stone stairs, you got to really be careful, right? Let's see, I'm going to go up. I'm going to go up. This is no joke. Oh my god, it's, it's high. This, this is how it was? Just this wide? Oh my god, you could easily fall. I know, I know. No railing. Woo! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that was intense. That's a, that's a big drop. <laughs> wow, look at this church. Incredible. More inscriptions everywhere. I think some vandalism here as well. People writing. And you have the altar. Ooh, this is really, really beautiful, really unique. I've never seen a church, two story church in my life, especially with that. I mean, it's a super thin staircase. Oh, if you really want to come up here, do it. I don't know if I can do it twice. And it's actually open air at the top, as you can see. The air just comes in. All right, guys, let's go down. Listen, this is really scary. Yes. Like. Ah! <laughs> All right, guys, I think the best way to get down is just going on your butt the whole way down. The whole way, yeah. That's not bad, it's not bad. It's not so bad. All right, guys, I survived. I went up, I went down. Be really careful on your way down. I mean, if you fall, that wouldn't be good. It's really, really high. And then here at the bottom, we have the second part of the church, right? Or the main part of the church. This is St. Maria with Jesus Christ, with Gabriel and Mikhail Apostles. And you remember I told you Armenian alphabet lies on swastika? And here we have a bright example of it, how we can find the letters laying on each other. G, A, B, R, E, K, Gabriel. We've entered the bottom level of the church. As you can see, it's still dirt, like the foundation. They never put like any like marble or like a brick or anything. It's like literally just rocks, rocks. You have candles. You have more, more crosses. And right in the center where the altar is, you have this huge cross, huge cross carved into the stone. Wow, this is like, wow. And right beneath it, we have another grave, one grave. It's so round, there's one grave here, huge cross. And that's it. So I'm guessing the top level is where like they would actually do like mass. This one was more as a prayer area. This is like really medieval. If you want to see a medieval church, come to Armenia. I've never seen medieval churches like this before. The rocks behind the monastery are full of mountain gods. And whenever there's a thick mist, some of them are coming down. <laughs> Alright guys, so we explored the monastery. Beautiful 14th century monastery. I mean, it's very unique. It's so different from the other ones I've been to because this one's, you know, the graves. You have the two-story church. Alright, so we explored the monastery. Now we're heading out and we're going to explore the cave. The oldest winery in the world. 6,100 years. Let's go. David, this is one of the uh, narrowest canyons we have in Armenia. I told you about you can find really narrow ones. And this is also an important bird area that means that there are very very special bird species living and breathing in here. And now we just made it here to where we're here at the cave? We're right at the cave. Okay, is, let's yeah. go. So as soon as you get here, you can see there's a ticket office. You pay a thousand drum, which is like two US dollars. You pass through and here we have at the cave. We have a staircase going all the way to the top. Huge rock formations. You ready? Yes. Let's go. Not that bad of a hike. A little out of breath, but oh, this is nice. Huge rocks. Huge boulders, check these boulders out right here. Incredible, oh wow. Look at that, the excavation. And David, this is Arani One Cave, a real treasury in Vyazor region. And inside the cave you find so much interesting that tells about the ancient life of people that lived in this area. So as you can see, there's a few different things here. You have, I think it's a huge pot, or is there a tunir? Tony is right in there. Tony is right there, so like the tandoor, the you know the ovens all the way back there, and they actually found the oldest shoe in the world. 
oldest leather shoe in the world. Oldest leather shoe. It was located right here. So you see the picture there. And by the way, it's European seven size. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see that actually in the historical museum in Yerevan, right? Yes. Awesome. This is incredible. This is wow. just the front uh, part of the cave, uh, which is not that much um, uh, old. We have different, different cultural slides. So as deeper as you go, as much thing you find from ancient times, like the shoe we found here. But Tonir is 13th, 14th centuries, the same period as Noravankis. Wow, that's incredible. As you pass through the entrance, you go through a super tight tunnel, and you make it here, and this is called Trench 2. So what's trench two? Trench two, you f we found in here different fragments. You see on this photo, like there are coins, different tools, jars they used in their daily life. This is tight. Wow. So many things. How many different spots do we have like this? We have many rooms. And even there are rooms we didn't open yet. Actually, archaeologists say if you are going to conduct the archaeological uh, excavations all of it you will need several generations to complete by the way this is one of the few places when you can stand so close to open archaeological site without glass on it and it's 6,000 years old and this is actually the oldest winery oldest known winery in the world here you find clay jars you uh, find uh, we found actually grape seeds and the most interesting thing is that the grape seeds we found in the bottom of these jars are super close with their variety, super close to the RNA grape type we have today. So it means that the type itself, it's minimum 6,100 years old. Something really crazy Lucina was just telling me is that they found three human skulls here. So 6,100 year old skulls and one of them actually had a brain still intact inside. It's the oldest one in the world. And they were sacrificed? They were sacrificed. We learned they might be sacrificed because... For wine? For wine. There was a wine worship in Armenia. Wild. And also, I want to show you this very special and beautiful jar. And I want you to go in details and imagine how the pottery was super developed at that time. What I think is the most fascinating thing about this place is that you can really get up close to the archaeology. Like you are not like separated by class, by these huge walls. You're like really in it. Obviously be respectful, don't get too close, don't touch anything. There's certain points there where only one person fits, that's it. So I saw this guy in Yerevan and he's actually based here right outside the cave and he actually carves into these stones millions of years old. He carves uh, crosses. The hand, this is from Etchmiasin, right? Etchmiasin, right? Well, oh, he told me, he told me. Uh, okay. <laughs> I forgot, I thought it was the hand of God. But I mean, really, really is incredible work. I bought two things today, cost me roughly about 100 US dollars. But look at the craftsmanship. It takes some weeks to do this, weeks. Look at this, look how many there are. This huge one's amazing. I, I got two of them for two very special people in my life. All right, let's go. I'm hungry, I want some wine. So we made it here to Old Bridge Winery. I actually tried some of their wines yesterday. Really delicious wines. And I tried their brandy. They have some delicious cognac. Oh, I cannot wait for this. Right here to the left, we have some of the vines. And over here, we have a showroom. So basically, lunch and wine tasting. Wine tasting. Yes. Welcome once more to our winery. Welcome to Vyazor, which is the most famous winemaking region in Armenia. Nowadays and thousands of years uh, the same. So today we will start our wine testing as usual uh, from our white variety of wine called uh, Boskehat. This is the name of the grape, original Armenian, not common to any other international varieties, very specific, very interesting and uh, other things you will, you will uh, Find for you before t uh, during testing. Ganats. 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 That sounds good. We are the most bitter wine 
Mm. Oh, wow. In front of us, we have an amazing spread. We have three cheeses. We have cheese over here. I think it's with a pepper. Is that a pepper? Yes, yeah, pepper. Got some bread, got some lavash. We have oil, oil from Armenia. These olives are actually from the border between Iran and Armenia. And we have this, my favorite. This is my favorite. Sun dry. Oh. Wow. It was really good. That's too good. Mmm. I love dipping bread into oil. Mm. That oil is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it's so good. And this cheese right here actually has thyme. So, urban side. Mm. These are really delicious local olives. We grow near the border with Iran. Let's try it. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mm. So soft. It's just like a burst of oil. Mm. You see how much oil is there? Uh, mm. That's a lot of oil. Yes. Mm. Next up, we're trying Ereni Noir, one of the oldest grapes in the world. This one's actually been fermenting 18 months in oak barrels from Artsakh. Cheers. 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 Let's try it. Wow, that's amazing. This is so good. I love the color. The color is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's a ruby. Now I'm going to do a ruby sip. <laughs> <laughs> Two international awards for this uh, exact wine. The gold in Mondosvini, Dusseldorf, Germany in 2018, and silver in Mundial competition from Belgium. Uh, 2018, uh, 15 year vintage, two years aged in again Artsakh Oak Barrels. <laughs> Whoa. What a mix, like you said. You feel a little chocolate, a little sweet honey. Mm. Oh my god. And you feel how pure it's really, it is. It's like fantastic. Yeah, and it's what really you, pure. It's super pure. And one of the things that he was telling me is that the reason their wines are so good is because they literally when they're cleaning the grapes, getting all the grapes, they do hand by hand, so they take off everything that's bad, you know, bad grapes, extra leaves, etc. Anyway, congrats, this is like too good. Thank you. Congrats, this is like congrats. real handmade. This is like the best. What is this? It's a pumpkin soup. Pumpkin soup. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Go see this. Mm. It's like a puree, a pumpkin with uh, some beans, some peas as well. Mm. Mm. Wow. Oh, it's so good. Refreshing, huh? Yeah, it's refreshing. I like the thickness of it. Mm. This is very traditional old Armenian soup. It's a pumpkin, beans and there's some oil and some red pepper. This is delicious and this is very healthy. Mm. And here we have another gold medal winner. This one is 2013, aged for 24 months in oak barrels from Arza, and also won at the, the Mundus, right? Mundus Vini? Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Wow, it's got amazing. I feel six more months in it. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's <the> alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good though. It is like the best wines. Like this is for sure the best wine I've tried so far in Armenia. These. And right here we have eggplant stuffed with some delicious cheese. They got some herbs in there. So good. Super creamy cheese. Mm. The eggplant has been roasted like to perfection. Oh my god. My friend. We still have more food, right? A little more? More. No. More is coming. I've been filling up on cheese and olives. <laughs> Tomatoes in Armenia are so full of flavor and they're very sweet. Tomatoes with cheese. 
Mm. So good. Guys, I can't tell you how delicious this is. The tomato like burst it out. The cheese gives this nice saltiness. Next up, we have two different things. We got beef that's been cooked in white wine sauce, and we have some vegetables that have also been cooked in white wine. Okay. Yeah, they don't give more secrets about how they made it, but it's just delicious. It, it really is. It's so soft. Mm -hmm. it, it's like so tender. Mm. Mm, you can feel the real taste of the meat, you know? You feel the grass. Yeah. Mm. Perfect. Now yeah, look at this. Cut it open, look how fast it just breaks apart. Listen. Just enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying brandy, I'm trying something in between grappa and brandy. It's like a hybrid. Basically, they use grapes, they add no sugar, and they put it into oak barrels and let it ferment for three to five years. So that it's, it's, it's like a mix, right? I mean, it's strong. It feels like a little bit of grappa, obviously because of grapes. Mm. Wow, but it also has the similarities to cognac. Because they preserve it in uh, oak barrels. Okay, that's why. That's so why you have they, this they smoky taste in a way, like a little, yeah. like the oak, you know? Like, like it's grappa without sugar and any eddings in an oak barrel. So good. Yeah. So good. Very strong. We do it with two nose. <laughs> She can't drink anymore. In Armenia, in Armenia, when anybody, uh, when somebody doesn't drink, you click it on the nose. Okay. <laughs> no, I gotta try this cake. This cake looks so good. So it's like a chocolate layer on top. In the middle, you have the cake. Mmm. 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 Not sure to play like more like a chocolate. It's a chocolate cake on the out layer. Creamy, crumbly in the middle. Another incredible day in Armenia. We did a mix of things. We went to a monastery. That was Noravank Monastery, one of the highlights we have in this country. When you come to Armenia, you must visit it. I loved it, very different. Gravestones, two-story church, really incredible. After that, we went to Arani Cave 1, which hosts the oldest winery in the world, 6,100 years old, really impressive. I can't even believe that exists. That's just... Incredible, incredible. Especially when you stand so close to open archaeological site without any glasses, you really feel the history in there. Yeah, just be respectful, don't touch anything, don't even touch the cave. Just like go through, see it, and that's it. And after we came here to the Old Bridge Winery, the wines were so good, so good. Like I am in love with it. Wow, every single taste was just perfection. You know, gold medals, three gold medals, silver medal, and they also have the only grandy I ever tried. Grappa brandy, so good, and the food was also really good. So if you're coming, you should definitely do the you know degustation. So basically, wine tasting. It's four thousand dram, so that's what like. It's eight. about fifteen minute drive from Noravank Monastery and the cave we were there. So you can do it all in one morning, like we did. It took us like four hours, five hours. We did it a little more slow, but we take our time. We really enjoyed it. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Armenia. Bye bye.